What's up, fight fans? UFC 290 this Saturday, July 8th. Here are my picks and predictions. But first, I'm going to go over a recap of last week, the Strickland versus Mega Madoff card. I ended up down one unit, which is actually, I can't say it's a bad thing because that fight card had a lot of major upsets. Oh, man. And who on earth knew Mega Madoff was only going to have three minutes of cardio <laughs> in a five round fight against Strickland. I mean, that was just insane. Strickland didn't touch him in the first round almost. And he had nothing for Strickland in the second round. Absolutely absurd. Didn't see it coming. Didn't see uh, Bowen, uh, Ishmael Bowen getting beat down like that. Uh, that was just unbelievable. Um, other than that, man, I was so impressed with Grant Dawson. That guy is going to be a force to reckon with and a direct threat to Islam Mahashev. I see Mahashev retiring before he has to go head to head with Grant Dawson. Grant Dawson is a nightmare wrestler for him. Okay, so <clears throat> UFC 290, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to give you guys my strongest picks first. And basically, if I have a little time in the video, if I didn't mention it, that means I'm pretty much not going to put my money on it. Right now, I'm just going with the strong picks. Um, pick number one is going to be, uh, I'm going to go with Vito Petrino to win. Uh, Vito Petrino is fighting, uh, let me look here, Marcin Prochnia. Prochnia is good, but I'm going to take Vito Petrino. Uh, Tatsuro Tyra over Edgar Chariz or Chares. I'm going to take Tatsuro Tyra. And I expect him to win maybe in round one and two via submission. I'm going to take, uh, I cannot pronounce this young lady's last name, but Yasmin Yagwe. Uh, I'm going to take her to win over Denise Gomez. Denise Gomez is tough, though. But Yasmin Yagwe, she, she boxes and her stand-up's on a totally different level. She's fast. She blitzes in with combinations. She's good, and she's totally content with just out striking you the entire fight. Um, next up, I'm going to take uh, Jack Medellina over Josiah Harrell. Uh, Medellina, th that guy is just amazing. The guy's stand up is amazing, his grappling is amazing. He's a hard to stop individual, and he'll probably knock this guy out or submit him in the first round maybe in the first few minutes of the first round. Um, this guy won't have much for him. Um, my next pick, I'm going to take Nico Price to send Robbie Lawler out with a bang. I see Nico Price dominating the fight. I see Robbie Lawler maybe having a decent first round. After that, the pressure from Nico Price will get to him. And at some point, it'll either be Robbie Lawler hanging on for a decision to save face, or Robbie Lawler running out of gas and just not having anything left and, and getting and, uh, Nico Price getting a stoppage because Nico Price is an in-your-face kind of fighter. And uh, he just keeps coming. Next fight, and I won't even call this a fight, <clears throat> Bo Nickel. <laughs> uh, they should have a one-minute prop because he'll probably finish this guy. Bo Nickel will probably finish this guy maybe a minute or two. But I'll say maybe in, I'm going to go with the under for sure. I'll be betting the under in the Bo Nickel fight, and I'll be taking Bo Nickel. Um, I'll probably take some props on if the props are decent money lines on the uh, first round prop or the first and second round prop. You know, that might be decent on Bo Nickel, but he's like minus 2,400. So you're not going to gain much by taking him. Uh, my guy, my main man that I'm looking for is Jalen Turner to put Dan Hooker to sleep. I got Jalen Turner all the way. He's roughly the same height as Dan Hooker, explosive punching power. Uh, you saw against Matisse Gamrot that he can, he can go up against a wrestler and not get completely dominated. So I'm going to go with Jalen Turner. And he even put some hurt on old Gamrot. Jalen Turner is, he, he, he can throw. He can throw. And he, can, he has good takedown defense. So I'm going with Jalen Turner. Uh, let me see who he's fighting. I'm sorry. Let me go. My God, Jalen Turner. I just said it. He's fighting Dan Hooker. I'm losing my mind here. Okay. Yeah, so Jalen Turner over Dan Hooker. Uh, 
Robert Whitaker definitely over Drikas Duplessis. No ifs, ands, buts, or maybes. Robert Whitaker's the much more versatile striker, and he's just Robert Whitaker's just a much better fighter. And Duplessis tends to fade around that mid midway point in the second round. Duplessis tends to fade. But he's big and muscular, and he can punch. So Whitaker's going to have to be a little careful. But I believe Robert, Robert Whitaker has just too many tools in the toolbox for Duplessis to deal with. Uh, my next pick, that's going to actually be an upset pick, and that's going to be Alexandre Pantoja. I'm going to take him to beat Brandon Marino. And the reason why I'm going to take that is because I watched their second fight. And man, his stand-up is on another level. Marino could do absolutely nothing with him in the stand-up. Uh, even on the ground, Pantoja still can hold his own and is a phenomenal grappler. So I don't know what Marino plans on doing differently for this fight, but he's going to have to come with something totally different for this guy, Pantoja, because Pantoja is a well-rounded fighter, and man, can he box. He can box. He puts some hurt on Marino the last time they fought, and I'm looking forward to him doing it again. So that's my upset pick. Um, next fight is Alexander Volkanovsky versus Yair Rodriguez. I love Yair Rodriguez. I love the way he fights. I love those kicks and elbows from all the different angles. But Volk is just, I think, Volk will surprise him by how fast he jumps in and out with hard punches. And uh, I got to give it to Volkanovsky on this one. I'm going to ride with him. Because his grappling, uh, he's sparring with Izzy. I mean, come on. One of the best stand-up fighters, one of the best strikers ever to come to the game. And he's in there. And, and even Izzy admitted that sometimes Volk gets in on him. And we're talking about a kid that's six foot four, and, 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 you know, for a guy as short as Volkanovski to get in on him, that, that says something. So I'm going Volkanovski all the way over Yair Rodriguez. And next, I'm going to give you guys my uh, my parlays. Uh, let me see here. My first parlay is what I call the poor man's parlay. And the reason I call it the poor man's parlay is because it's designed for the guy that can't afford to lose a dime on these fights. So you would parlay Tatsuro Tyra. You would parlay Jack Della Maddalena and Jalen Turner. You parlay those three. And that's my poor man's parlay. Next up is my rich man's parlay. I got, you would take Robert Whitaker, Nico Price, and Yasmin Uruguay. That's the rich man's parlay, those three together. Rich man's parlay is for the guy who could take a little bit more risk and put some heavy money on it. Um, and my last one is what I like to call the Hail Mary parlay. It's usually an upset pick in my Hail, Perry, Hail Mary parlays. And this Hail Mary parlay is... Uh, Alexander Volkanovsky, Vita Petrino, Vitor Petrino, and Alexandre Pantoja. That'll pay you out nice if it hits. Um, I definitely think all three of those are very strong candidates for winning. And uh, but that is my Hail Mary parlay because it has that upset pick in there, uh, Alexandra Pantoja. So I look forward to seeing you guys after the fight. I'll do my recap next week uh, before I do the uh, review on the Holly Home. Like and subscribe to the channel. Um, I do countless hours of studying these fights and the different records and things of this nature and the fighter history and everything. And I try to make the best bets. Um, I'm going to mention somebody else on here that I don't really... I may throw him in a few cheap parlays, but nothing serious. And that's a guy. Let me see who I got. I had notes on him. I have a guy named Jesus Aguilar over Shannon Ross. Shannon Ross has been a disappointment every time I watch this guy. I go back to his old fights. I don't know how this guy's in the UFC. Jesus Aguilar is a come-to-your-face, 75% submissions this guy, he jumps on you from the time the guy says, fight, he's in it. He goes right at you. So I'm put a little something on Jesus Aguilar, add him in a few cheap parlays, and see what happens. They don't materialize, no big deal. But the name of the game is to get you guys winning money, not just analyzing fights. It's all about getting you guys winning money because I like to win money. I don't like to throw money away on long 
crazy shots and, and make no money doing this. So last week, even with all the upsets, I still was only down one unit. Most guys lost their shirts. And um, fortunately, that didn't happen for me. And usually that doesn't happen for me. I know how to gamble, not just pick fights. So good luck. I hope my picks help you guys a whole lot. Like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next fight. Take care.